Hello friends, welcome back. Let us continue with our discussion related to appreciative inquiry. Previously, we discussed about what are the working principles behind this concept of appreciative inquiry. Today, I will talk about the cycle that involves in the process of appreciative inquiry. So, David Cooper Ryder has identified a 4 D cycle, 4 dimension cycle or 4 D cycle which has talked about focus that how positive core can be maintained, identified and nurtured based on a particular cycle that can be implemented during that process. So, although there is no formula to execute appreciative inquiry, but the diagram which is based on 4 D cycle actually identifies the process in a way that how new ideas can be nurtured when that idea has to go through a process. So, according to Cooper Ryder, they have identified 4 Ds in terms of discovery, dream, design and destiny. Destiny is what mark has been attained or decided to reach to a particular point where it starts from discovery. So, when we are not focusing on problem solving, then actually we are trying to discover new ideas to ignore the problem and focus on the positive course. So, according to 4D cycles, discovery is appreciating what we have, what are the positive course of the organizational system or the process and how we can use that core, positive core in a more productive manner. That means, it connotes what gives life the best of what it is. The other is dream. It is about envisioning or visualizing the results that if we are using those positive cores in a more productive manner, then what can be achieved that we have dreamt of. So, targeting a higher level while dreaming of that level is actually the next phase that is what might be or what is the world calling for that we are not focusing on the solution because it is dragging the organization at the back foot. But when we have a better idea, then it is actually a new calling. The other is design that is we are co-constructing, we are cohabiting again within the organization that what should be the idea. Even we have envisioned something beyond at par, then how we have to, there has to be a plan, there has to be a design with some new resources and how that positive core can be again redesigned in a way that will help us to reach that goal. So, designing is very important that how we are co-structuring or we are co-authoring the policies and procedures in a novel fashion. And the last is destiny. It is how to empower, learn and adjust. Whether something is missing, then how we can empower ourselves within that missing area also. While not focusing on the missing area, while not focusing on problem solving, then how we can identify what are the core aspects which exist and how we are relating with those aspects. It is about sustaining how we are sustaining, how we are maintaining the positive course within the organization. So, let us talk about this 4D cycle much more into detail. Now, within this 4D cycle at the center is the affirmative topic choice. It is again a positive core of any organization which will start a discussion at this point only. That means, we are selecting a positive opportunity for members and organizations which can lead us to a strategic course of action for the future. We are saying that these, these are the positive aspects of the organization which is very much affirmative in its own way. There is no doubt that there is no doubt that we are focusing on the positive core which is more affirmative and how we can based on those positive choices we can indulge in that 4D cycle. So, at the center is the affirmative topic choice, it is the starting point and the most strategic aspect of any AI process, any appreciative inquiry process. So, selecting affir affirmative topics in any is an opportunity for members to an organization to set a strategic course for the future and AI becomes, to topic becomes an organization's agenda for learning knowledge, sharing and action. So, now from this affirmative choice focusing on positive core will actually will be the impetus, 
it will be the ignition start of engaging more into advanced learning, knowledge sharing and action orientation. So, when we are talking about this 4D cycle, then the affirmative topic choice serves as seeds for the dream phrase and as an arena for crafting design propositions and taking action in the destiny phase. So, that means this is the seed where the 4D cycle can be initiated. So, according to selecting affirmative topics, it involves a cross section of people from, from throughout the organization. Again, it, we can relate this aspect to mass mobilization where people from every corner of the organization, every designation can join that mobilization process based on affirmative choices and how people come up with their new ideas. And the other is that it grows out of preliminary interviews into the organization at its best. When there is intense inquiry about ideas to reach to a new height within the organization, then it grows out of interviews because people will only offer constructive ideas. They are more into giving more ideas and action orientation rather than talking about solutions. And the other is that challenges people to reframe deficit issues to into affirmative topics for inquiry. That means, they foster agentic model while ignoring the deficiency model. So, they are reframing the issues which creates deficiency while focusing or transforming those issues as agentic issues or salutogenic that means life giving issues to any new problem. This is the affirmative topic choice of 4D cycle. Now, next comes once their affirmative choice has been made, topic choice has been made, then organization can indulge into this virtuous cycle of 4D cycle. So, first is discovery. This is the core discovery task is disclosing positive capacities that means focusing on the positive core and invites wide dialogue and learning through a process of appreciative interviewing. It indulges in intense discussions, interactions, communications and interview. People offer more high organizational points, high points that where organization from that positive core can reach to a highest point or core. And then based on this, organizations tend to identify and pick up those ideas which suits best. So, this is discovery. At the heart of the discovery is the appreciative interview. The uniqueness of this power is that it stems from its fundamentally affirmative focus. People will offer affirmative and very confident ideas which are workable based on their experiences. So, they uncover what gives life to their organization, department or community when at its best. This is, this is the first aspect that is discovery. From discovery reaches to the dream. Now, ideas are there. Now, people have dream also. They visualize that based on the positive core and ideas, how we can visualize our organization reaching a new level. So, this phase is about to engage the whole system in moving beyond the status quo to envision valued and vital futures. This is the status quo that is the positive core and how we can envision the organization to a higher point. This is about dreaming. We are envisioning, we are imagining we are trying to recreate a new image of the organization. So, it is an invitation to people to lift their insights, exercise their imagination and discuss what their organization could look like if they are fully aligned around its strength and aspirations. So, picking about the positive cores of the organization and aligning it with the dream or the or aligning with the new goal of the organization will actually foster a new era for the organization. This actually comprises of stories, analysis and maps of the positive course. What previous life has offered the positive, what current comprises of the positive core and how it can lead to a more positive core in future organization. So, this is the mapping of the positive core which serves as an essential resource of appreciative inquiry. So, dream phase calls for people to listen carefully to moments of organizational life. It is not about that we have just expressed our dream. 
Now, dream we have only based on the positive stories of the organizations, picking up from those uh, stories, we come up with new idea and then we are dreaming that how we can vis visualize a new organization. So, it is best to share images of their hopes and dreams in a collective future and all possibilities for the future are articulated and enacted they come to life. So, positive core discovering new ideas aligning with what you have visualized then it leads to another cycle that is design. You have the organization has identified the status quo, but how you are challenging that status quo? That challenge can be only made when we have some workable design, we have some workable idea that when this is enacted, then that vision can be implemented in real situation or in reality. So, during the design phase of AI, people are invited to challenge the status quo as well as the common assumptions underlying the design. It requires lot of efficiency in terms of policies, practices, procedures, new knowledge, new skills, new abilities that can challenge the status quo, even the relevant positive core is being challenged. So, what would our organization look like if it were designed in every possible way to maximize the qualities of the positive core and enable the accelerated realization of our dreams. So, AI leads to the design of appreciative organizations capable of supporting stakeholders in realization of the triple bottom line. As you remember, we have already used this term in terms of uh, corporate social responsibility that how any positive core when used till designing, then the focus is triple bottom line in terms of people, profit and planet. How we are protecting people while putting them at advantage, how we are maximizing the profits while not hampering the resources and we are more sustainable enough. So, that design is actually comprising three core elements people, profit and planet. So, the design is actually challenging not only the status quo, but it actually challenges that to what extent the organization can sustain based on environmental, economy and social aspects. The last is destiny. This suggests that organizational change needs to look a lot more like an inspired movement than a neatly packaged or engineered product. No matter we have design, but that design should not be very much rigid in a way that any design has just all the technical aspects imposing and making it workable. That design should define the destiny of the organization while adding more positive to the core of the organization. That is, there is establishment of empowerment, connection, cooperation and co-creation. So, that means, the cohabitation should be more nurturing uh, in a way that there is more democracy mobilized constructively and appropriately, the power of the positive core is existing in that organization. Ultimately, it should not be about focusing only on the profit, that design should actually analyze the destiny of the organization in terms of adding more positive core to the organization in terms of cooperation, in terms of democracy, in terms of empowerment, in terms of co-creation, in terms of constructive power of positive core and simply letting go of negative accounts. That means, not focusing only on problem solving, but on only on the positive core. So, there will be positive spirals using positive core, focusing on the positive score and then spiraling positive core. That will help any organization to sustain, to nurture talents in a more illustrious manner. So, this is actually the real understanding in the figure that how organizations are being transformed while not focusing on problem solving, but actually appreciating on the positive core. So, transforming existing organizations requires discovery, dream, design and destiny. Discovery actually focus on inquiry into the positive core and then calling up the capacities. Dream, it is about strategic vision and then engaging large number of stakeholders in creating a compelling vision and values. Design, 
it is about articulating organizational values and crafting a design or crafting a practice or procedure in a very organized fashion and creating an appreciative organization in terms of relationship, in terms of clear purpose, roles and responsibilities. And the last is destiny that is acting to realize the dream in alignment with the principles. In nutshell, the idea is that when we are talking about destiny of, of any organization, there should be purpose which are based on strong principles and there is continuous improvement, innovation in alignment with vision and values. That means we are sustaining not only at economic level, we are sustaining at climatic level, we are sustaining at psychological level and we are sustaining at social level. So, we can say that the aim of appreciative inquiry is to build or rebuild organizations around what works rather than trying to fix what does not. Had it been now imagine that if we were just talking about problem solving, then actually we were not growing anywhere. Even in the discussion itself, we were not growing anywhere because we were just talking about solution whether it will work or not. But starting afresh with the positive core will actually lead to rapid growth. So, appreciative inquiry practitioners try to convey this approach as opposite of problem solving. So, this is all about positive organizational scholarship in terms of virtuousness, resilience, meaning in life, well-being, mindfulness and appreciative inquiry. So, I am ending this session while stating that we are through with the discussion of all the modules which are already in alignment with, with the other group factors. So, I hope you will find these lectures to be interesting. So, thank you so much.